Hey everyone, in this video I want to show you how to assemble and install the Y-splitter that I designed for the Bamboo X1 Carbon AMS system. Hope you enjoy. So the first thing we're going to do is cut our PTFE tube and you want to make sure you use the extra tube that came with your printer because these are four millimeter outside diameter and two and a half millimeter inside most tubes that you get these days the common ones are only a two millimeter inside diameter and they're really not recommended and may not work very well for this project and if you don't have any it can be ordered on Bamboo Labs website you want to cut a short one to approximately 45 to 50 millimeters and I think mine is at about 48 right now and then you want to cut a second one a little bit longer uh, somewhere between 70 and 100 is fine you don't have to be as fussy here I think mine's about 70 and it works great. These two pieces are going to attach to the splitter and the short one's going to go into the single bottom of the Y and the longer one is going to go into the, as it's facing you, is going to, going to go into the bottom section of the tube here. And I designed this so that they use standard um, PC4 by M10 PTFE connectors and the reason I like these is because they grip the PTFE tool and hold it into place. You can only push it in one direction and then it grips it and then in order to release it the little black cap here is spring loaded. So you have to push that in while you pull it out. I modeled this because I wanted one where the tube would seat a little bit deeper and it, it's a good snug fit and it bottoms out like 17 millimeters down somewhere in that range. I think, that's, I think it's modeled at 17. So these push in nice and snug, they bottom out and honestly, you might, you might be able to use them without these connectors, but I'm going to plan on using this for a long time, so uh, that's the way I did it. So after you cut these, I'm not going to do it because mine are already cut, but you want to use either a good PTFE cutter. To, you want to make sure they're nice and square on the cut. If you don't have one of these, make sure you use a really sharp blade and your utility knife and get it, you know, get it on some kind of surface where you can give it a nice square cut straight down. And because the dimensions aren't super critical, you know, we've got a range of 45 to 50 and 70 to really as long as you care to go. I, I think 70 is a good length. You can probably easily go up to 100 without any problem. And then the other thing you can do just uh, after you make the cuts is if you have a little chamfering bit. Um, this is a little uh, small size I have from a set, a uh, cheap set that I got at Harbor Freight. And just just do it, do it by hand. I wouldn't put it in the drill, but just give it a few spins to kind of just take the inside edge down and make sure it's nice and smooth on both ends. If you don't have one of these bits, you can do that with a utility knife. And again, be careful and go slow. If you kind of hold it and just spin it with your fingers here like so, and you can kind of put just put a little chamfer or clean up the edge, any rough edges that may have resulted from your cut. Once that is done, uh, the next step is to screw in our um, our fittings here, our uh, PC4 by M10 fittings. So there's three versions of this in the model I put on printables and I printed right on the part. The only difference between the three is the the clearance on the threaded portion here. So I did one with zero clearance, one with zero point or point zero five, and a third one that's point one. Um, the .05 I printed on my bamboo with, this is with PETG from New Makers. Um, it, it's actually a slightly loose fit, but they, I can snug them down without them stripping, so this works well. I probably could have got away with the zero clearance, but I didn't feel the need to um, reprint this because it works so well. It's, it's a little snug, um, which is what I want, and I can get them pretty hand tight and almost to bottom out. But go ahead and insert these and just go slow and make sure they go in and don't cross thread. And then take either your an M10 wrench or an adjustable wrench and just tighten them up till they snug up and kind of hit the bo bottom out in the, uh, in the hole here. You don't want to over crank it because you don't want to strip it. But just, yeah, just crank them down until they're nice and snug. And then this is ready to go. So we, the way this is going to install is we're going to put this on the back of the printer and we've got an M3 by 6 socket head screw that's going to go through this slot into a screw, or screw hole. We're going to remove the screw from the back panel of the printer to mount this. And then this just 
fits right in, it just snaps in with a nice positive click. So that whole thing's going to be screwed in and, and held in place um, with the clip. So the way this is going to work is we're going to insert the short piece of PTFE tube into the single side of the bottom side of the Y and just push it in and make sure the whole thing bottoms out in there. I'm going to take my clip off here. Um, and so that's all the way down and that's good to go and then the longer piece when this is mounted we're going to we're, we're going to feed from the spool holder into the bottom side here so that's where you want this piece to go and again push it in make sure it bottoms all the way out in there and I forgot to grab a piece of filament let me get my visual aid for that so just grab a short piece of filament like this and we're going to use this just to test and make sure everything is moving cleanly. So with everything bottomed out in here, put your filament in. And uh, before you do that, make sure these are also cut square because the AMS, when it, um, it does the cut on the filament, it cuts it square. So all those years of cutting at an angle, we don't want to do that when we're dealing with the uh, X1C or the P1P for this device here. So just slide it in. And you may feel just a little bit of a catch right where the PTFE tube ends, right in here, and, and then it's just all plastic until it hits this PTFE tube. The important one on this one, and it's just it's barely grabbing, but it's fine. But you can see it moves through, and it moves really freely in here. So when you're doing when you're feeding filament from the AMS manually, you're going to push it in manually here, and it's. Yeah, this is really good. I've been using this for a couple of months and it works great. Um, you can test the top piece. Now this is going to be the longer PTFE tube coming from the AMS. Loops around, goes in here, and then this, this tube feeds the hot end, the extruder. So the filament comes from the AMS, loops around, comes into this. The tube is hooked up here and it comes in. And if you slide that in and test it, there's, you can see there's no resistance. This is the one that's probably more important not to have any any catching or you want a super smooth motion because this is the one that's all automated. So when the AMS retracts, it pulls it all the way out of here, and then when it pushes in the new color, it pushes it in. Got to hit the hole in there, um, and that moves really smooth. So this is the action you want. You want this to be able to move really freely through here. And again, if it's not, pull your PTFE out. Try the little champ for a little bit more. So the other thing I did on one of these is I just took a, I have this two and a half millimeter handheld drill, with a two and a, or handheld drill with a two and a half millimeter bit, and I just put it in there and just gave it a couple of light turns and pulled it out and it just gets that little bit of plastic that might be on the edge of the two millimeter hole that's inside here. If you don't have one of these, another one of these, I have some of these little diamond coated diamond dust scraping sanding tools. Uh, this works pretty well as well. You can just get in there and just twist it around on the edge, knock out any loose filament, and then put it all back together. Honestly, this the way this is modeled and it, the way it prints on the bamboo, I really didn't have any any real issues here. So again, the short one goes in here. Just make sure it's bottomed out because that will also minimize the chance of it catching. Then you're good to go. So now we're ready to go to the back of the printer and install this thing. So let's go to the back of the printer. We're going to install the uh, assembled Y splitter and the clip are going to be mounted here on this corner. We're going to take the screw out, which I've already removed on this corner of the side panel. Uh, it is the equivalent of the one you see over here, and that's where you're going to need your two millimeter hex wrench to remove that. Uh, one tip I will give you, make sure you use the short side of the L on this when you remove it, because these are in really tight. And I've had plenty of uh, hex heads strip out on me when I haven't got it seated in tight, or I use the long arm when it's super tight to try to loosen it, it tends to strip for some reason more than when I use the short side. So I seem to get better leverage when I get it locked in there nice and then you can turn it and just be careful you're not stripping it as you go. Step one is to remove this screw and then before we mount anything we need to remove the PTFE tube from this side of the coupler. And the way these work, like I demonstrated earlier, they're spring loaded on this little black side here. So you need to push that black piece in and I'll try to do it so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just using my thumbnail to hold it in and then just pull that out. And you can see it wasn't inserted very far. That's a very short travel on this particular connection here. And so with this disconnected, I would just make sure that it's routed 
above the, uh, the hub connection where it plugs in and under the spool holder. And then we're ready to insert the, um, the connector with our PTFE tubes inserted. And again, we're going to push it in the short side, the bottom of the Y goes in here, and I just made sure it's bottomed out. And then I'm going to snap on my clip, like so. And then I made this slot adjustable, so depending on the variable length of your tube here, you've got, you can maybe go another 5 millimeters this direction, um, out, you know, outward before you're going to, you know, you'd have to cut the tube shorter. Uh, it's much the slots much longer than it needs to be, but this tube here doesn't have much flex It can't really push into the printer. So um, But it's easier to get this all snapped and inserted before you put the screw in so that you've got a nice tight fit and you're not You don't have this tightened down and then you're fighting to get that in there. So with that done we take our um, Our two and a half millimeter hex key and insert our Carefully hold our little three by eight, three millimeter, I'm sorry, not by eight, by six, and just hold it in there and then just give it a couple of turns, get it in there and give it a couple of turns to get it started. And again, this, um, there's not a lot of room behind this to hold it, so when you crank this in, um, it's only going to take a couple of turns to get tight. And I did try using an 8 millimeter long screw in here and it, it doesn't work. It's too loose and it bottoms out. And frankly, this thing will actually work, probably work fine without even being held within the clip if you kind of let it flop around. I just prefer to have it snapped in because it, it seems to hold it and keep it in, in good shape. So now the last piece to do it is to take our PTFE tube from the AMS uh, little junction box thingy here and slide it in down here and again push it in all the way hold it firmly and make sure that this thing goes all 17 millimeters in and bottoms out in there and you may find it easier to pop it off the clip give it a good push and now we can take our piece of test filament and just test the operation again just to make sure and I'm going to push that in and yeah that slides no problem so the way this will work is you take whatever spool you want to load from the um, spool holder and you want to make sure, let me pull this out and straighten that out. So this is a roll of uh, Newmaker's uh, Pet G which I just love. I discovered their filament and it works so well for the bamboo, it just prints great, very little stringing, um, end of the ad. But basically what you're going to do is just take this, push it in, and you just keep pushing. Uh, one ca caveat here, before you start feeding this in, make sure all of your AMS filaments are, um, are unloaded. Oh, and then the other thing to note is you want to feed the filament from the bottom of the roll. If you're coming off the top, it's going to be really hard to make, like impossible to make that turn. So. So yeah, so you just take it and keep feeding it. Take the filament coming from the bottom, feed it in here and keep pushing till it hits the extruder. And you'll feel it stop when it gets there. Yep, I just hit it. So now if you have the latest firmware where they support the on uh, the filament tab, it now lists the spool holder as a separate item. You can test it and make sure everything works. So I'm going to move the camera around. Okay, I want to take a shot at filming my touch screen here and see how well it works. So to test this, basically what we're going to do is uh, wake up our screen. We're going to go to the settings and the filament tab. And you can see the new firmware now has the, uh, the new spool holder section that it didn't have before with the four AMS uh, units or 8 or 12 or 16 depending on how many you have. So quick way to test this is we're going to take, uh, I'm just going to select slot 1, the PET G here. And I'm going to tell it to go ahead and load this. And so it's going to heat up the hot end. And again, I don't know how well, if you can read that, but it's prompting us what it's going to do here. So it's heating up the, the nozzle to 250 degrees, and that happens pretty quickly. It's going to cut the filament when it's done with that. Okay, we're almost there. We're at 240 degrees, and it's performing the cut. And now it's Pulling, going to pull back the current filament. Well, there's nothing to pull back as nothing's loaded. 
So what this is telling us is that it's a good thing it reminded me. So I did remember I did push this in. Um, I actually meant to test this first and not the AMS, but so pull this back out. We don't want this in while we're loading. And don't ask me how I know, but <laughs> it's very important to make sure you remember to do that. The new firmware really helps because it's a little more uh, dummy proof for me, guys like me who forget to do that stuff. So I've removed that filament and now I just tell it to retry. So it, de it detected that I had pushed the filament up to the, uh, up to the extruder. So now it's loading the... you can hear it, I'll see if I can dial back if you can see that spinning. It just loaded the filament and if we go over here and take a look you can see the green filament is in my PTFE tube and it pushed it through and the next step is that it's actually purging old filament right now so if I open the door yeah we're not gonna it's too dark in there to see but basically what it did is it purged the old filament down the poop chute out the back now it's ready to go so we can we can start printing with the green PLA and send a print job, or we can do an unload test, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to select it, make sure it's selected, and then hit unload. And it's going to heat the nozzle up again, cut the filament, and then it's going to back it out. And this just ensures that our splitter is handling pushing the filament through it and pulling it back out with nothing getting screwed up or jammed. And that's exactly what happened. Um, really it can't be really hard for it to fail pulling it back out where the biggest um, potential for failure is going to be when it's inserting it and you can see that it just backed out that filament and if we want to test it again let me get over here again um, I'm going to send the I think the orange will probably show up the best so I'm going to select my orange and I'm going to select load, and we're pretty warmed up already, so this should happen pretty quickly. And if you watch the tube here as it's loading, um, it'll be it'll be pushing the filament coming up from the bottom through here, feeding it to the extruder. So here it comes. If you watch, we should see it come up here. There it goes. And yeah, it it works perfect. There's no resistance going through. It's not catching on anything. It's going right to the extruder and now it's purging the old filament so I can see the green being purged and when it's done uh, I should get a prompt on the screen here if I remember right. Nope, it's just done. Yeah, so I think where the there's a purge option when you use the other one. So let's go ahead and test the spool holder side now. So I'm going to unload this wait for that to back out. And what's nice when you have the AMS unit is this is all automated. There's no manual intervention. And you can see the the orange is the orange pet G is being backed out and unloaded. And now I want to go ahead and I'm going to load the from the spool holder. I should mention I put white PET G on there, so I should probably change that if I'm actually going to print something. The last thing I printed was black PLA from back there. So you can hit the little edit icon, and I can tell that now that I've got PET G, and my color is white. And confirm. And so now with that selected, I'm going to say load, and it's going to heat the nozzle up, and I'm going to intentionally not feed it in there yet, I'm going to wait till it tells me, which, if you can read that, it's going to be step two here. So once the nozzle is up to temp, there we go, and we should get a dialog box now telling us to feed the, um, the filament from the spool holder until the tool head sensor is triggered. So we're going to grab that filament, and just like I showed earlier, I'm not going to move the camera this time. I'm going to manually feed this in until I can feel it hit the hot end extruder down there. And I guess I haven't watched there. So it tr it triggered on its own. I didn't have to like acknowledge anything on the dialog box. As soon as I felt it hit, it was ready to go. 
So now it's telling me to observe the nozzle if the filament has been extruded, click done. If it's not, push it again and hit retry. But I can see that the filament is extruding and it's pushing the orange filament out of there. And so I'm, now I'm going to hit uh, done, not close. And then I'm going to move my camera down. Let's see if I can do this. And I, yeah, that's way too dark. So what it's doing right now is, it, is it's extruding more, much like it would do on a filament change, um, and purging all the orange so that it flowed long enough that I got nothing but white out there. So now I've got the white filament loaded and I'm ready to go. So when I jump into my slicer and send a job to the printer, the only thing I have to be careful of is... Um, let me go to the home section. Let me go to the file menu just to show you. I'm going to pick a. I'm going to pick an Easter bunny to print here, um, and I can change this to Pet G. If I tell it not to use, oh, I think because I sliced it for PLA, it won't take that. Let me find a different model. Um, let's see, internal. Yeah, I just here's my uh, my Y splitters. I just printed in PET G. So if I tell it not to use the AMS, and this was pretty well, I could I could have it use the ABS AMS because I have my colors loaded here. So I can switch to any PET G that's on here, but I can't pick the spool holder even though I have a PET G loaded in it. And I've told um, the filament tab that I do have PET G in that it doesn't show up as an option here. So in order to get that option, what I have to do is deselect use AMS and then it it went right and it's gonna it tells me I need PET G loaded and it really um, I think if I had PLA in there it, it may not work I haven't I haven't had this um, new firmware long enough to know for sure but now at this point I can choose whether I want to need to level the bed do flow calibration and or time lapse and print it and it'll go off and print it uh, since I don't need to print these again I'm gonna go back so, and you can do all of this from the slicer as well before you send the job to the printer. So that's really it. I hope the, the splitter, if you choose to print it, works great for you. I just wanted something that used those PC4 by M10 connectors and had a little little deeper path for the PTFE tube to be seated in there. Just It, it just seems to work really well for me. And it was a fun little project to design. So thanks for watching, and I hope to come back for the next one. Take care. Bye.